It has been five long years since the Texas Tech Bobcats have had a chance at revenge against their counterpart south at I-35, the UTSA Roadrunners. But tonight, the Bobcats get that chance as they host UTSA in the I-35 showdown from Bobcat Stadium. Here's a snap to Stern, four-man rush, has protection, steps up, he'll run it, looking for the corner of the end zone, not going to get there. Just Sean Wadding chopped him down to the four-yard line to bring up fourth and goal. King comes in motion right to left. Williams fumbled the snap. Ball is still live. Picked up by Tal Effa, and he'll walk into the end zone for an easy defensive score. And UTSA's defense off to a fantastic start here tonight. Third down and 13. Bob gets the ball at their own two. The snap comes into the end zone to Williams on the keeper, running left five, 10, has a block, 15, 20. There he goes inside the 30-yard line, down to the 33. Damian Williams picks up 32 yards in a first down. Now first down for the 32, out of the gun. Williams, four receivers, two either way. Three-man rush, UTSA, pass over the middle. It's caught by Mason Hayes across the 45, inside of midfield, down to the UTSA, 42-yard line. First down, Mason Hayes. Second down and 11 from the 16. Williams throws left side. Caught by Hayes inside the five. Williams takes a snap, calling his own number, moving the legs forward is the end. Yes, he is. Touchdown, Texas State. Bobcats bring it a four-man rush. Handoff road, running left, and he is denied. Gabe Lloyd. Picks up Rhodes by shoulders and slams him down to the far numbers of the 47 for no gain. Second and 10. Snap back to him. Flips the football around the fingertips. A high spiraling punt angle to the far side. A Bobcat roll inside the 20, inside the 10, and down to the one-yard line. Where Bobcat on his high horse getting there to down the football. And UTSA has to go 99 yards. Two receivers either way for Sturm, third and three. It is a handoff, Rhodes running left at a big hole, cutting it inside, slicing inside the 40, breaks another tackle to the 25, running left to the 10, one man to beat, he'll beat him. Jalen Rhodes, 67 yards, touchdown UTSA. UTSA moving around a bit on defense. Here they come, a five-man rush. Williams steps up, throws on the run, has a receiver trade wide open to 35, cutting it back right inside of midfield. And finally dragged out of the 38-yard line. Gabe straight found his seam, and he took it and ran. Snap to Williams. Hand off Anthony Smith. No, play fake. Pass is caught over the middle. Jeremiah Haydell. Touchdown, Texas State. Under center, Sturm trips left, takes a snap. Play fake. Sturm pressured and sacked back at the 19. Ball comes out at the 20-yard line. Who's got it? The Bobcat who sacked Sturm was Graham. The ball, though, was recovered by UTSA. And Gavin Graham coming in unblocked for the sack of Sturm. Goal to go from the five. Backs off to the eye. Sturm takes a snap. Handoff play. Cut back move to his right. Darting ahead into the end zone for the touchdown. Now third and 13 for their own 30. Four wide for Williams. It gets a four-man rush. A screen caught by Taylor. Running right of the 35. Cutting inside of the 45. Inside of midfield. And a Bobcat first down. And again, your score at the half of the I-35 showdown. It is UTSA 27. Taxi State 14. Well, we get the ball in the beginning of the second half, so we got to do something offensively. We got to play better up front, uh, be able to protect our quarterback, be able to find a way to run the football. Uh, we're making some plays in the pass game. So we got to find a way to run the football, to stop the run. Those are the two things we're not doing in the first half. From their own 41, option play, a shovel pass inside the game, trade, picking his way through UTSA defenders. Tawafa brings him down across the 45, to the 43-yard line for first down. Staff back to Ripley, a swing of the right leg from his own 43-yard line. High hanging punt, knuckles inside the five, and the Bobcat player reestablishes himself in the field of play, puts the ball down to the one-yard line. Second from 27 yards out, the kick is up to the uprights, and UTSA is on top, 30 to 14. Here's a four-man rush. Snap to Williams. Steps up. Protection breaks down. And Davenport slings him down for another sack in his back pocket. Now 15 and a half in his career. All-time sack leader at UTSA. And the Bobcats from their own 17 will punt the football back. You know, obviously you lose uh, 
you know, three starters. Um, that's a big deal, but that had nothing to do with uh, the offensive defensive line getting dominated. Shotgun snap coming to Williams, hands out, takes it, looking, steps up, throws middle for White, the catch across the 40, and a first down to the Bobcat 43 yard line against pretty good coverage there from Levine as the Bobcats move the chains. Williams calling for the snap, takes it, runs an option, he'll pitch it running left. Smith 45 inside of midfield. How about Anthony Smith? The Bobcats' best run tonight down to the UTSA 42 yard line. Roadrunner is showing a blitz off the middle. They nearly jump off sides. Low snap to Williams, gets away, and has to dive onto the football all the way back at the 37 yard line. All that movement up front may have affected Aaron Brewer on the snap, but it's now third down and forever. We got a uh... We got our bus beat tonight, so, um, and and he knows that, and we know that as players, and uh, we're we're gonna come back out tomorrow and uh, refuse to let that happen again. First down, snap to Sturm, back to throw, and he is sacked back behind the 20, out around the 19 yard line. The Bobcats have not hit Sturm a lot tonight. They do there. Jordan Mitty on that play, bringing up second down and 12. On first and 10, Gibb is to Rhodes, cutting right 25-20, a block away inside the 10, reaching for the pylon is the end. Short right corner, he's got it. Uh, tonight they were way more physical than us. We, we got manhandled up front, I think they ran for 300-some yards, and you, know, you can't win a ball game with that. The Bobcats blitzed on Sturm, and he's thrown back, loses the football, the Bobcats recover at the 40-yard line. And Dalton Sturm shaking up on the play. The Bobcats brought the house. Well, you know, if you can't run the football against a good defense, there's no way you're going to have any success. Uh, we couldn't stop the run tonight, and we couldn't run the football. So when those two things don't go well for you, you're not going to win. And the I-35 showdown goes to the visitors from San Antonio in dominating fashion. Final score from Bobcat Stadium, UTSA 44, Texas State 14. The Texas State Bobcat football season is presented by HEB. I'm Lamar, and this is the Jank. When something is awesome, we say it's the Jank, which describes my barbecue sauce and my story perfectly. Whenever I used to buy barbecue sauce from the store, I'd always have to add a little of this or that to it. So finally, I just decided to make my own. And after months of experimenting, the Jank was born. HEB chose it as a quest for Texas best finals. Now that's pretty Jank. This is the best in Texas department at HEB. Look for these and other great primo picks at HEB. Sir Jeremy, you are a true friend of the crown. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. dilly. Madam Susan, you are an even truer friend of the crown. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. What is that? This is a spiced honey mead wine that I have really been into lately. Please follow Sir Brad. He's going to give you a private tour of the pit of misery. I'm sorry, what? Pit of misery, dilly dilly. dilly! Here's to the friends you can always count on. What do I like about Texas State? People watching on the quad. I love that we can express ourselves. Our campus is so beautiful. Bobcat football. The glass bottom boat. Our professors are amazing. When I see Old Main, I know I'm home. We're the only university in Texas to graduate a U.S. president. Downtown San Marcos is practically on campus. Our tech library. So box derby. I'm doing amazing research. I'm definitely jumping in the river at graduation. I'm just proud to be a Bobcat. Can I like say all my favorite things? <laughs> Our goal now is to try to transform the players in our program into a better football program, a better football team. An accountability level that's off the charts. Looking back on, going back and watching the film, uh, it's pretty much what we thought uh, physically up front. We were uh, 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 not uh, uh, able to sustain up front. They were very, very talented up front. 
on both sides of the ball, blocked blocked the run well. We missed five fits in the uh, in the uh, run game against the power uh, that led to uh, probably over 180 yards of rushing. Um, we uh, we didn't uh, block them up front to get our run game started, and when you when you don't block them to start the run game, you can't protect the passer because now they just rush the passer on you. So. Uh, that's probably the biggest area that I saw was uh, in both lines. We weren't able to uh, block them or stop the run, get off of blocks uh, defensively up front. So um, I thought uh, the swinging point probably happened early in the ball game. Uh, we missed an opportunity for a big play. Uh, we dropped a, probably a touchdown pass. And then the next play, we turned over for a touchdown. So. You know, when you get plays like that, uh, those are big plays uh, that swing momentum in, in the ball game. And that probably had as much to do with the momentum and the emotional swing in the ball game. And then obviously losing two starters uh, also is a factor. Um, so we, uh, you know, have to learn how to uh, respond to adversity a little bit better. Uh, when you're a young team, that's one of the teaching points that you have to go back and learn how to respond to. To tough times, and uh, I think our kids are, are doing well. I think we went out yesterday uh, and had a had a good practice, not a great practice, but a good practice. So we have to come back Tuesday and get ready. This will be, I think, opponent number four in a row that uh, played in the bowl game. Three of the last opponents uh, either played for conference championships or won a conference championship. Um, so this has been a, a first five games has been a uh, a really good test, challenging test for our football team. I think, you know, he, he helped build that program at North Dakota State and he built it off, you know, tough, hard-nosed kids. And you see that in the Wyoming program. You see tough, hard-nosed players. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of five stars on their roster. You know, they got good, hard-nosed kids that love football. And I think that's kind of their MO, uh, which I, you know, I kind of respect and like is, you know, go get kids. And, uh, that love the game. Uh, so, yeah, I think he's doing basically the same things that he did at North Dakota State that he's doing it at Wyoming. I think he, you know, first couple of years he was trying to get the culture in place and all those things. And, and you know, I think last year was year three. Was last year year three? Yes. Last year was year three, and they played for the Mountain West Championship. So, uh, I think he was trying to get things in place. I think he's starting to get that now at a – draft choice last year in the offensive line and uh, a draft choice at running back. So I think he's starting to get the get the culture the way he wants it. Usually when I've evaluated guys in, in that, at that level, uh, you look at this, their demeanor. Uh, he, he, he's obviously got the physical tools. He, he can, I mean, when you watch him throw the ball, he can throw it from uh, the, the left hash to the, the right numbers uh, on the rope. Uh, he's got all that, and the ball comes off his hand. I mean, he's not a big wind-up guy. It just kind of comes off his hand like it, like it should uh, for an NFL quarterback. Um, you know, he's struggling a little bit, I think, offensively because they're trying to find a way. He like anytime you lose a 1,800-yard rusher uh, that you can turn around and do that to, uh, and you lose, I guess, a guy got drafted last year off the offensive line. A couple guys that got this year, they got some injuries up front, so they're still trying to find their way offensively, but his skill set fits uh, the National Football League. Some beers have a lot of ingredients, a lot of different ingredients. Our beer is brewed with four essential ingredients, barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on, brewed to be America's favorite light lager.
do I like about Texas State? People watching on the quad. I love that we can express ourselves. Our campus is so beautiful. Bobcat football. The glass bottom boat. Our professors are amazing. When I see Old Main, I know I'm home. We're the only university in Texas to graduate a U.S. president. Downtown San Marcos is practically on campus. Our tech library. Soapbox Derby. I'm doing amazing research. I'm definitely jumping in the river at graduation. I'm just proud to be a Bobcat. Can I like say all my favorite things? <laughs> They're tenacious, driven, and honestly, I think they're fun. Their energy level is great. Um, their energy level is great, and like I said, it's, it's thinking, you know, the same pace, the same ideas, and they've got to be together. <laughs> uh, we have some finishers. They've just got some innate ability to know when to hit it and know how to finish, um, so I'm excited about the firepower. Here at the Bobcat Stadium end zone complex, you can hear players making improvement in the weight room. But have you seen the improvements in the Bobcat Stadium end zone complex? From new murals honoring those who have made the NFL, to Bobcat team captains having brand new display plaques and a brand new uniform display on the lower level, one thing is certain, team headquarters have never looked better here at Texas State. We kind of walked through Coach Withers, myself, and um, kind of pinpoint some things that we wanted to do. The first thing was the locker room. And the reason behind that was because we wanted to get that done for the current team that was there. Um, so after we did the locker room, then we walked around. Uh, the team meeting room was definitely something. And then we just wanted to honor the, the history of this place with, with some stuff on the walls. Right behind us is uh, Texas State. And we did that for two reasons. One, we, we had it illuminated in the background because at night as you're driving by, you can see that and you can see um, in the stairwell the uh, Bobcats, uh, we call it the cylinder. I, I don't, it, it was kind of to take up space, but it, it's a really cool thing that you can see at night. And then two, um, it's a great photo opportunity for recruits right when you walk in. We also uh, designed one of the NFL walls up there, um, and that was just to honor the players from the past who had gone on to um, either get drafted. All the guys that were there got drafted um, and played at, at least a year on a team and we have two balls there. One is uh, for the guys that are currently on the roster and the other one is for all the guys that had been on the roster. Um, and, and that's great for recruits to see all of our, our history and success in the NFL and also um, for our current guys just to have a goal to, to walk by every day. So the Bobcats in the community wall was uh, one of the things that Coach Withers really wanted to do, and it's an updatable wall, which is very neat. If you go up there now, um, the things that were there a couple months ago aren't, aren't in there now, so the pictures are updatable. And it's just to, to show how, how important community service is with, with uh, our football team. The team meeting room is probably the most important room in our, our building. It's where all of, all of our when we have 120 guys together, it's either special teams or just team meetings, have speakers in. So we really want that room to be, uh, you know, flashy. We want it to be comfortable. Um, all, all the recruits go in there at one time. So the, the chairs, we redid all the chairs, had their now leatherback um, theater style chairs, which is very comfortable. Um, and then two, that we redid all the walls, have new graphics on all the walls. Um, and they're just kind of our sayings, our, our team foundation, our core values, our principles. Um, and then uh, we redid the carpet, we redid the sound system. So we totally, that's like a brand new room and uh, it, it's fun to be in there and it's really important to us. I want them to take away a couple things. One is, is that they can see themselves as a part of this in the future. Um, and two is, is that there is a great history here, and it's something that they want to be a part of, and they had to. Our goal now is to try to transform the players in our program into a better football program, a better football team. An accountability level that's off the charts.
make sure to show your love and follow the Bobcats on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and their YouTube channel. Show off your tailgating skills and team pride and you could win a $100 HEB gift card and bragging rights. To participate, all you have to do is show your team spirit by decking out your tailgate site and displaying HEB products in a creative way. Check out this week's winner. What do I like about Texas State? I love that we're close to Austin and San Antonio. The observatory, great stargazer. Our tech library. Our professors are amazing. Our round theater building. People watching on the quad. We're the only university in Texas to graduate a U.S. president. Our campus is so beautiful. I love our flexible class schedules. Saving turtles at the turtle crossing. Downtown San Marcos is practically on campus. The new labs at Star Park. I love that we can express ourselves. Grabbing lunch at Jones. Bobcat football. The glass bottom boat. Soap box derby. <laughs> I'm doing amazing research. I love the squirrels around campus. I love exploring new ideas at Common Experience. When I see Old Main, I know I'm home. The courtyard at Taylor Murphy. I love our student art gallery. Climbing the rock wall at the Rec Center. I'm definitely jumping in the river at graduation. I'm just proud to be a Bobcat. Can I like say all my favorite things? <laughs> This Saturday, the Bobcats close out non-conference play against a familiar opponent, the Wyoming Cowboys, a team the Bobcats played twice in 2011 and again in 2013. For more on this year's game, we are joined by longtime radio voice for the Cowboys, Dave Walsh. Dave looking at Wyoming so far, 2-2 two two through four games, including an overtime win over Hawaii this past week. Looking at this first month of the season, Dave, what has stood out about the Cowboys? Well, I, they said that going in, or everyone felt, really, the coaching staff and, and fans kind of felt that there would be, it'd be difficult to replace uh, four players from the offensive unit that graduated in, or left early and went to the NFL. And, and uh, that was the one thing before the season began that Coach Bowles said, we have to find a way to replace those guys. And uh, Wyoming just hasn't been able to do that uh, as well as they had hoped. You have this great uh, player at quarterback that has uh, gotten a lot of attention, and he just hasn't uh, – Josh Allen just has not been able to get that Cowboy offense going the way that they had hoped or, or anywhere near the effectiveness that the offense had last year. But did get a big win in overtime, Brent, just uh, Saturday night, and that was huge. I mean, that gets them kind of backed at the start of their second season, they call it here, it's conference play. And it, it uh, gives them a great confidence boost, of course, uh, going into this Texas State game. Dave, we mentioned the win against Hawaii last week and the struggles for Josh Allen, but he did make the game-winning throw to beat the Warriors last week. Do you feel as if that throw, that moment, could serve as a turning point for Allen and the Cowboys offense? I think so. That was a, that was a great catch on, a, on a, a pass in the back of the end zone. And James Price had to lay out to make the catch. And uh, although it was certainly a great pass, too, it was right where it had to be. The one thing that has happened with the Cowboys' uh, uh, receiving core, there have been a lot of drops. They just haven't performed that well. And uh, Josh, of course, was 9 of 19 against Hawaii. Well, there were five drops in that game. So there, that has been a problem. Dave, you bring up the defense. The big number that stands out to me for Wyoming is the amount of turnovers they forced already this season, 10 of them, to include the game-winning interception this past Saturday against Hawaii. What's Wyoming doing so far this year to create so many turnovers? Well, again, I think uh, getting Carl Granderson back, he was injured very early last season. And I think just the maturity and the, the progress that the front seven has made a big difference. You know, last year, the two safeties for the Cowboys had to make a ton of tackles. I think they're both over 100, actually. When you talk about Marcus Epps and Andrew Wingard. Well, this year, it's not, that's not the case. There's, a, there's better play up front. Uh, I think those things, getting a couple of guys back, better play up front. And of course, a new philosophy from your defensive coordinator has all helped in that regard. The two head coaches in this game both came from FCS stops prior for head coach Evan Withers at Texas State at James Madison and for coach Craig Bowl at Wyoming and North Dakota State where he built a dynasty at the FCS level. What kind of program is coach Bowl building right now here at Wyoming? I think it's kind of been back to basics before Coach Bull came. The Cowboys were running the spread offense and doing a lot of different things. And uh, kind of back to basics and the, the theory and the, the way that Coach Bull likes to go about things is pretty simple. 
Uh, Wyoming must run the football and play great defense and win the turnover battle. And that's pretty basic football. Now you have a guy at quarterback, of course, that is such a great thrower. So that brings the, the passing game a little bit more into Coach Bowles' philosophy. Uh, I think it's, it's worked out for the most part. Previewing the game itself this Saturday, Dave, the Bobcats and Cowboys again did play each other a couple of times a few years ago, but a lot has changed since then. Looking ahead to Saturday, what are you expecting out of the matchup? I think the two games you look in the past, you know, are very similar. Texas State, of course, came out and really spanked the Cowboys after that long rain delay. And then, of course, uh, what, six years ago in that game, it was pretty one-sided with Wyoming uh, winning here. So that was then. I think the Cowboys and everybody around here certainly knows that uh, you can't really look back at those games and make any kind of comparison or thought on, on how this one's going to go. Uh, everyone around here knows just how talented and uh, the athletic ability that is uh, evident on that Texas State team. And I think it's going to be a very intense game. I know that uh, Texas State would love nothing better than to get that losing streak snapped, and the Cowboys would like nothing better than to uh, kind of keep it going as they go back into conference play. So uh, that was then. This is now. And, and I think the Cowboys are going to prepare for a very, uh, certainly a very worthy opponent, very athletic opponent on Saturday. Thanks again to Dave, and that will do it for this week's show. I'm Brant Freeman reminding you to trust the path. We'll see you next time.